Section 1. You are going to hear a conversation between Angela and Mr. Ray. Angela is applying to join the library. Listen to the conversation and complete the form below. You have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen. Hello. How can I join the library? You need to make an application. Your full name, please. Angela Mary Price. Okay. And your address? Apartment 3, 86 Bridge Street, Pimlico. Bridge Street. That's just near here, isn't it? Yes, not very far. Good. So the postcode must be 2065. Now, your telephone number. I need both home and work if you have them. My home number is 8763-5142. And work is 84561307. Do you need anything else, like ID or something? Yes, your driver's license will do. Right. It's easy to remember. 4040AC. And your date of birth, please? 24 March 1981. That's the most important part completed. But if you don't mind, I'd also like to ask you a few questions for a survey we're conducting. Yes, that's okay. As the conversation continues, answer questions 6 to 10. What kind of books do you like to read? Oh, it varies from time to time. But I always like to relax and learn about other countries I might visit one day. I don't like anything too heavy or serious, unless it's about animals or the environment. I'm not really into sport very much. I do like entertaining at home. You know, dinner parties. So I suppose you'll have something for me in that line. The pictures in those books always make me hungry, although they never seem to turn out exactly as they look in the book. I think that's all I need now, except I need you to sign here on the application form. The membership fee is $20, which is refundable if you no longer stay a member. You can borrow books now if you wish, Although your membership card won't be ready until next week. So if you want to borrow today, you can pick up your card when you return your first books. That's if you want to take some now. I think I will, but I'll have a look around first. Okay. This is the end of Section 1. Now turn to Section 2. You are going to hear a lecture about dining services. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 14. Answer questions 11 to 14. Welcome to the Dining Commons. This is the newest facility on campus, and I am proud to say, also one of the best. All university students miss eating home-cooked food. This year, we are hoping to provide students with food and services that will make you feel at home, even without your family. The administration has been listening to the voice of the students. Students gave us frequent suggestions last year as to how we could improve the university one of the most frequent suggestions was improving the dining options. We have been working hard all summer to come up with ideas that will make student life in the dormitories more pleasant. One of the new options we are offering in the dining facilities is variety in student meals. Last year, there was a set menu for every dinner, so if students didn't like the food, there was no choice. Students had to eat whatever was served. But this new dining facility has three completely unique areas, each with a different theme. At every meal, there will be three options for students to choose from. For example, there might be Italian food at station number one, which might consist of pizza and pasta. At station number two, there would be American food, consisting of hamburgers and hot dogs. At station number three, there could be vegetarian soups and salads, accommodating all the vegetarians. We hope that with the greater selection of food, all students will find something to their liking. Now look at questions 15 to 20. Answer questions 15 to 20. Not only will students have more options, the food will also be better. Each section of the facility will have a head chef. These are real chefs that have been trained in culinary school and have been hired specifically by the school to work in the dining facilities. All of the chefs have a speciality. The school is hoping that these chefs will prepare better tasting and more nutritious food. Every student will be able to make suggestions and also give their input as to which menus taste better. Last year, Many students complained that the dining facilities didn't have very convenient hours. This year, we hope to change that. We will open for breakfast at 6am to accommodate all the early risers. In the evenings, we will open until midnight for all the students that like to go for a late night snack. 
The afternoons will still remain closed, but we will have a student store open that will provide all students with drinks and fruit. The student store will be open every day from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Every student that has paid full tuition and dormitory fees has already paid for their dining facility fees. Students can eat at any time and in any amount for free. If you are a student that does not live in a dormitory, you can still purchase a dining facility card. This card will entitle you to the full services of the dining facility. This card is available only for students and is not open to the general public. If you are not a student and wish to dine here, you must purchase meals at the door. There are a few rules to follow. Even though we do not limit the amount of food that can be taken, we do not want students to waste food. Please do not take more than you can eat. Also, every student must clean his or her own trays and plates. We will provide plates and trays for student use, but please do not abuse these items. Please do not leave your plates on the tables. Your parents are not here to clean up after you anymore, so I hope all students will be responsible. Thank you for your attention and enjoy the upcoming year. This is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section three. Section three. In this section, you are going to hear a conversation between Anne and Marcia. In the first part of this conversation, they are talking about the commands of training dogs. First, look at questions twenty-one to twenty-five. Note the examples which have been done for you. Now listen to the first part of the conversation and answer questions twenty-one to twenty-five. Complete the table showing different commands for different forms of dog training. So that research paper we have to do next, the one about how our different styles of training dogs. How do you think you'll approach writing it? You know, I've been thinking about it. I feel that the best way to write it is to divide the paper into two main parts. In the first part. We'd be analysing some examples of each style of training dogs. Right, what the styles are. After that, we can talk about how each style can be used, so that the dogs learn something different from each one. Indeed, maybe we could draw a chart and compare examples of each style of training one at a time. So the different kinds of training would be simple obedience training. There, you would have things like teaching them to sit, stay in one place, and so on. Right. So included in here would be simple audio commands like speak. Yes, basic commands are just spoken words, aren't they? And then there would be the more guard-oriented training, where the dogs are trained to know a specific place well. Patrolling and barking are probably the best examples because most people have seen them in many places, especially in homes. And this would lead us to the attack dog training, which is physical as well as spoken, training the dog to knock someone down. And even biting if they have to. Right. So there's another category as well: sniffing dogs, which make up the searching category. I've read that in the UK, every major airport and government building has these dogs to search for all kinds of dangerous items. In the second part of the conversation, Anne and Marcia talk about all kinds of training and what kind of dogs they are suitable to. Look at questions twenty-six to thirty. As you listen to the conversation, match A, B, C with the following forms of dog training. One has been done as an example for you. Listen carefully and answer questions twenty-six to thirty. I can believe that. Well, we have a good list to build on. We're finally getting started now, so let's try to figure out when each type of dog training should be used. I guess we can start by trying to figure out the best situation for each type of dog training. Hmm. What do you mean? What I mean is whether each type of training should be used with different kinds of dogs. 
We could use basic obedience training, for example, and ask whether it's more useful for a small dog, a medium-sized dog, and so on. In this case, I'd say obedience training is best with small dogs because they tend to get excited easily, and this will help keep them out of trouble. Okay, that makes sense. Then let's look at physical training. Even though some people think it's ideal for every breed of dog, I think it's better suited to the larger kinds. Small dogs usually just aren't smart enough to understand the physical commands, and they can even get hurt from them. The specialized sniffing training is the same. I think they're better with the more intelligent breeds of dogs, and they're hardly ever useful with really small dogs. Attack training, however, can be useful for every kind of large dog, as long as the dog is treated well and given a lot of care and attention. All right. And what about guard training? Barking is an ideal way for small dogs to guard a home. I know they aren't big enough to stop a person, but making some noise is often all a dog needs to do. Other kinds of guard training, like biting, though, are different. I'd always plan to teach those to a smart dog, give them a chance to use their brains and defend their homes. I'd have to agree. Trainers often just teach large dogs to bark at a person when they think something isn't right. But if they know how to use physical skills in a bad situation, they could save their owner's life some day. Yes, I suppose that different people would have different needs for their pets. Right, and different trainers would recommend different methods for different breeds. This is the end of section three. Now turn to section four. Section four. You are going to hear a lecture about dorm rooms. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Now listen to the tape and answer questions thirty-one to forty. Welcome to your new home for the upcoming year. These dorm rooms are among the best in the nation and are the newest ones at this school. So I hope you will all learn to appreciate them and take good care of all the facilities here. I am Gina, and I will be residential advisor in this building for the year. Today I am going to tell you about some of the programs and facilities that are available to you. I will also be telling you the rules that everyone is expected to abide by. I will be asking you to give me your full attention for the next few minutes. I will first tell you about the facilities that are available to you. The dining facility is located on the first floor of the building. It is open seven days a week from 7 a.m. to midnight. All the food offered to students is freshly made every day, and my own opinion is that the food is actually quite good. Feel free to come and grab a banana for breakfast. Or sit down with a group of friends for dinner. Although your meals are served buffet style, please do not waste food. All students are expected to clean their own tables after meals. In the basement of this building, there is a gym and recreational hall. The gym has workout equipment such as treadmills and weight sets. In the recreational hall, there are ping pong tables and a pool table for student use. You must sign in when using this equipment, and you will be held responsible for any damages or losses. The gym and recreational hall are open daily from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. There is a kitchen located on the second floor of this building. Your dorm key will open this door. Inside, there is a refrigerator, a microwave, an oven, and a stove. This room is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you decide to cook a meal, please be considerate to all the students and clean up after yourself. You can use some food in here, but please do not make a mess. Some students do end up having their food eaten from the fridge, so be careful. Don't leave anything that looks like it tastes really good. Do not leave pots and pans lying around in the kitchen. Please store these in your room. There are many programs being sponsored by our building this year. One of the most popular is our Saturday morning outings. In the past years, these trips have included going fishing, hiking, cycling, ice skating, and even going to the beach. There will be a listing of schedule events coming out soon. The university sponsors these trips, so transportation will be provided. However, there are usually some costs associated, though they are usually minimal. Our building also has a volleyball team. All students who live in this building are welcome to join. Last year, we won first place in the dorm league. Please sign up at the front desk if you are interested as soon as possible, as there are only 20 spaces available based on a first-come, first-served rule. 
The last things I want to talk about are the rules of our building. I know rules can be boring, but they are necessary to ensure the welfare of everyone living here. First, noise levels must be kept to a minimum after 11 p.m. Many students have early classes, so for those of you that have the luxury of sleeping until 10, please don't stay up late making lots of noise. Secondly, all visitors must sign in at the front door. Even if you have friends that are regular visitors, they must still always sign in. This rule is to prevent theft and robbery from occurring. Thirdly, alcohol and drugs are not permitted in this dorm in any place or at any time. Lastly, just be safe and have a great time. University is the greatest time of your life, so make the most of it. This is the end of Section 4.